is insane. Look at the steam coming off the top of that compressor. There's no way that compressor is still working. No way. <laughs> and if it is, it's going to be dead when we start it back up. This is insane. Good grief. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We have a call today on a rooftop package unit not working. So the customer's complaining that it's not cooling. Um, when I get up here, the first thing I notice is, obviously the condenser's beat down. This unit's really old. Both condenser fan motors are running, but I'm feeling cold air blowing out of the condenser. It sounds like the compressors are running, but we're not rejecting heat. I shouldn't say cold, but we're just not rejecting heat. Got a little trail of water. Uh, now, the reason why we have this trail of water, we've told them many times to get a plumber out. This drain is completely blocked downstairs. So it just overflows. So we have it disconnected. They put a bucket up here, but we told them to get a plumber up here to get that fixed, and they obviously haven't done it yet. But let's open this up. Well, that one's not too difficult to diagnose. Some dodo head has two metering devices in this unit now, but we have, looks like a restricted liquid line filter dryer. So, this compressor is not even, oh, this one's running. So first stage is running, second stage is not running. Let's uh, find out if second stage is supposed to be running. Man, these guys are beat down. This unit is just beat down in general. Um, so before I turn it off, I need to see if we have a call for second stage and then I'll shut off the disconnect switch. So second stage actually just turned on. Compressor's running, discharge line's hot, suction line's cold. This guy has a lukewarm suction line because we're restricted at the filter dryer. So I can physically feel it right here is warm, right here is cold. So this dryer's plugged up. Go ahead and turn off power. We know we need to change that dryer. The question is, what caused the dryer to plug up and is there any other issues with the unit? Um, the unit has compression. We have a really hot discharge line, but we need, I shouldn't say it has compression. The unit has a hot discharge line. We need to see, well, it's gonna be hard to tell if we have anything going on on the suction line because if we have a massive restriction, we don't know if the compressor's pumping. So we're gonna have to start by recovering the gas out of the first stage, we'll recover the charge, and changing the dryer, and then going from there. Unfortunately, this could lead to a problem. This could lead to um, plugged up metering devices in the evaporator, because it is a fixed orifice metering device, it has the accurator metering devices, but we don't know until we start it back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and recover the charge and we'll start from there. This is an original R22 unit, by the way, also. Um, we're not gonna convert the refrigerant because this is mineral oil in these guys. And, uh, these, and these guys have certainly been overheating too. So which leads me to think that, you see the heat coming off that compressor? It leads me to think that there's gonna be restricted metering devices in it. Um, but we'll do our best. We'll change that dryer at least. This is insane. Look at the steam coming off the top of that compressor. There's no way that compressor's still working. No way. <laughs> and if it is, it's gonna be dead when we start it back up. This is insane. Good grief. I'm pretty confident that even if this thing doesn't plug up the new dryer immediately, that the compressor's gonna fail soon. Based off of the sizzling, you know, condensation dripping on it, like, the compressor's gotta be toasted, but, this particular customer, I know what they want and they want me to try, right? Because there's always the very small possibility that it'll start up and run and get them a little more life. So I'm gonna try. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and recover the gas. I've got the recovery machine running. And uh, once that's done, we'll swap out a dryer. Got a new spoiling catch-all. We'll go with the 16.3 right here. And then uh, we'll go from there. So the factory charge on the first stage is 9.5 pounds. And there we go. It's got the full charge in it and it's just about done recovering. That's pretty good. So uh, got everything up here. I'll go ahead and uh, swap out that dryer.
And it's not perfect, it's ugly. I burnt the top of the dryer a little bit. I didn't use a heat blocking compound, you know. I'm not always perfect. It'll be fine. We have really dry environment here. If we had a lot of moisture and humidity and stuff, you know, that would rust out, but we're not gonna rust out that dryer. Um, I gotta find a way to support it, and we're gonna go ahead and get ready to pull the evacuation now. Got some of the copper plumber's tape. I don't think it's real copper. It's just like tin-coated copper or something like that. Um, but uh, it goes on there, holds that dryer nice and sturdy. We're good to go. Uh, evacuation, I'm, I'm not going crazy here because this one has high flow schraders. So there's no way to really get the Cormax, I'm sorry, the uh, True Blue hoses on here unless you have the high flow Schrader depressors. But in my experience, after the first month or two of using the high flow Schrader depressors, they just start leaking. So I really don't continue to buy them. This is an instance where I'm just gonna pull through the manifold. See where we're at. So that's not a true vacuum because the vacuum gauge is actually in the manifold and there's more of a suction from these two hoses on the vacuum gauge than there is on the system. So you need to shut off the two guys right here and then let uh, the decay happen to see what the true evacuation level is in the system. So I'm gonna keep letting it run. I'm just kind of cleaning up a few things, tidying up, and then uh, we'll get ready to uh, charge this guy up. Hooked up the refrigerant cylinder, purged up to here, opened this guy, zeroed out the scale. Go ahead and add it in through the high side much gas as it's going to take we'll see i might have to get a little refrigerant from the van depending on how much this guy takes well i'll be it's running and first stage which is the one i changed the dryer on is not looking too bad look at that i don't doubt that the oil in that compressor is trash though and it, i guarantee it's going to plug up that dryer again soon it's only been running for a few minutes so we need to let it stabilize out but let's have a look over at the second stage Second stage, superheat's still really high. Subcoin's about where I expect it. So we're gonna let it run for a little while and uh, see how it operates. Well, shoot, this guy's looking pretty darn good. Circuit one, I mean, everything's right on the money, as good as it's gonna get. I don't think it's gonna get too much better than that. Circuit two, look at that. I mean, head pressure's a hair on the high side, but what do you expect from that? <laughs> that condenser's trash. Let's go look at uh, temperature split. It's about 90 degrees outside. We have a 20 degree temperature split. Uh, we're calling for about 19. That's about right. Airflow seems on point. Delivered capacity is a little bit on the low side. Well, actually, no. We're a little bit on the high side. So yeah, that's pretty darn good. Um, guys, I, I don't think there's too much more we're gonna be able to do about this. They need to get ready to replace this unit. Uh, I was wrong, it's not mineral oil, it's alka benzene oil. Um, but this thing is just beat down. I mean, for a 2005 package unit, they've gotten their money's worth out of this guy for sure. But I mean, look at the panels, the roofer went crazy with this thing. But yeah, there's not too much more we can do. I'm surprised that dryer didn't immediately plug up, but I'm gonna warn them that it's gonna plug up here really soon. So usually what happens, the compressor overheats. We had a crazy hot summer, it's expected. You can see the top of those compressors was completely rusted out. When the compressor overheats, it cooks the oil. The oil gets going through the system. It just turns to nastiness, plugs up the dryer, plugs up the metering devices. Um, yeah, so there's really not much life. The gas is turned off on this guy. I was wondering why, but I just looked in the uh, combustion area and it's completely full of cobwebs and spiders and it looks like the heat exchanger is all rusted out so we'll deal with that in the winter um, we got another month or two before we need heating uh, we got problems here but yeah that's it we're gonna wrap this one up all right what caused this dryer to plug up well first off let's talk about what the dryer does it is a liquid line filter dryer it's there to clean the refrigerant to try to reduce any uh, non-condensables, contaminants, whether they be actual particulate, uh, you know, slivers of, of copper. It's, it's there to protect the compressor, really, to protect the system um, and the metering devices, okay? So, um, I, yeah, I guess it wouldn't necessarily, it, it kind of protects the compressor, but more or less it's there to protect the metering device. 
And what happens is as the refrigerant runs through it, that filter dryer grabs moisture, grabs contaminants, and it collects it inside the dryer. Now on almost all manufacturers of dryer, there's an inlet screen. Usually, usually the inlet screen is what plugs up. When you have a completely restricted filter dryer, it's usually the inlet screen. It's usually made of like a mesh material of some sort and it just completely gets blocked up and restricts the dryer to the point that in this case, it actually became a metering device. It was changing the temperature of the refrigerant. We had high temperature liquid refrigerant going into it and we had you know, frost, ice coming out of it. So it was definitely below freezing. So with that being said, what caused that dryer to plug up? Now that dryer had been replaced before because I could tell from the 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 um, the, the burnt uh, paint on the top of it, it has been replaced before, but it has not been replaced in years and years and years, okay? Um, it has been a very long time. Uh, I don't even know, I can't even remember if I've ever changed that dryer. It might've been one of my other technicians or maybe someone before me that was doing this restaurant. But with that being said, on a system this old with Alka benzene oil in it, R22 still in there, in my opinion, the oil is contaminated, okay? And then you guys saw the teaser, the opening clip, and then you saw you know it again later in the video where when I turned the condenser or the, the, the system off, that ice started to defrost on the liquid line and it was dripping on the head of the compressor and it was steaming, it was sizzling, okay? The compressor's internal temperature is insane in this situation. It should not have been that hot. It is internally damaging that compressor, okay? There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I do not give this system a very long shelf life. I don't think it's gonna last very long, but, you know, even to my reluctance, I, I went ahead and changed the dryer and got the system going. In my opinion, that, that system needs to be replaced, okay, really, or two new compressors, an evaporator, and a condenser put into it, but that'd be silly. Actually, that's not silly these days. Customers are approving all kinds of crazy stuff like that, but, um, you know, I changed it because I know that's what the customer wants. They want to try. They want to try to squeeze every bit of life out of this equipment, and hey, who am I to tell them no, right? So, I went ahead and did it, and surprisingly, this thing is working. Now, how long is the question, okay? Um, the condenser's shot. Uh, certainly, I could have grabbed a fin comb, okay, and tried to straighten out the fins, but I will tell you, on a 2005 unit, okay, when those fins are that bent, when you straighten them, they become even weaker, and it seems like you could blow on the condenser and the fins would bend back. So simply someone doing a preventative maintenance coming by and washing the condenser would bend them right back. Uh, once they're bent that bad and it's an, as old as it is, it's pretty much done, okay? So with that being said, I got the equipment up and running and it's doing everything that it could. Certainly, you know, the contactors, I looked at those because I'm always replacing contactors, right? I looked at the contactors. They weren't in horrible shape, but they weren't in brand new perfect shape, but it's like, eh, I, I don't need to necessarily change them. They were working. I didn't really see any issues. Now, I didn't show you guys but I did measure voltage drop. I didn't get any voltage drop across them or anything like that. So everything seemed okay. But was that not insane how hot that compressor was? And you can clearly see that on the top that all the paint is gone and it's just pure rust on the dome on the head of that compressor from it overheating for so very long. I will tell you that a lot of these restaurants, uh, COVID just did its damage on all of their equipment because everybody stopped preventative maintenances for like an entire year and a half, two years. And it was just reactive maintenance, you know? I still have customers that haven't picked up on the preventative maintenance and, and we're, you know, it's been a long time since we had the shutdowns and stuff. So you can clearly see that the damage has been done on this equipment, but I was dumbfounded that the metering device was not plugged up on this equipment. Holy moly, those dryers are doing a good job, right? Who knows? But um, went ahead and did my best to put the system back into operation. It's running. Everything's going good. So that's it. You know, we can only do what we can do. I certainly will tell the customer, hey, it's time. I've actually been discussing with this particular customer. And I gave them a punch list at all of their restaurants. Like, hey, this is uh, from uh, severity. Like, I gave them a priority list. Like, this is number one to number 10. And I gave them, like, three to four items at every one of their restaurants. Like, we need to get these things taken care of, you know, because 
it's getting bad, you know, and, and they're going to have catastrophic failures next summer. Now we're going into the winter, into the fall right now. It's uh, currently October 8th of 2022 and it's, it's cooling down ish, right? Still about 90 degrees outside 98, you know, every once in a while we hit hundred degrees, but we're going into the cooler part of the year. So their ACs are going to be fine. Um, you know, they'll make it through now, if they do have extra money, of course, I'm going to push them to replace this equipment, but that's their decision to make, not mine. Right? So, Hey, I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much for all the support, the feedback, the comments. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, there's a bunch of people that don't subscribe to the channel that watch the videos. And certainly it would help if you guys were subscribed. Although YouTube is kind of weird, even for subscribers, they don't necessarily tell them that I'm uploading videos. Like YouTube does weird stuff with their notification stuff. But anyways, I'd really appreciate it. Leave me some feedback down in the comments. If you haven't already, uh, check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, merchandise available if you want to help support the channel. Um, yeah, there's uh, links in the show notes of other different methods to support the channel. Of course, if you guys are interested in purchasing any tools, check out truetechtools.com. Uh, I have an offer code, big picture, one word, uh, on almost all the items on their website. There's a few exceptions, but on almost all of them, you'll get an 8% discount if you use my offer code, big picture, again, one word, and I get a small commission from that. So it's a great way to help support the channel if you want to, okay? So thank you so very much. I really do appreciate you. Be kind to one another, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?